often tell people that my career path really involved a lot of luck. And then they think that I'm being all modest and don't believe me, but it is true. I actually got my start as an intern in Vice President Al Gore's speechwriting office. Um, I'd actually originally been placed in his scheduling and advance office where I made rental car reservations <laughs> and um, heard a lot from my co-intern, this guy named Len, about his sex life, which was <laughs> really entertaining but not what I personally had in mind for my summer. And I, <laughs> I ran into one of Vice President Gore's speechwriters and just begged him to let me come work for him, and he said yes. And so he and his colleagues actually helped me get my first two jobs after college, one of which was in state government in Maryland. And I commuted three hours a day round trip and sat next to a windowless cubicle. I was in a windowless cubicle right next to the bathroom. So that lasted nine months. Um, mm -hmm. I then went and I was a speechwriter for a wonderful, wonderful Democratic senator from Iowa named Tom Harkin. And I could not write my way out of a paper bag at that point. And after Hard about, to believe. Uh, it was true because you after, need more people. <laughs> after about nine months, his chief of staff sat me down and said, so I hear you're thinking about law school. You should definitely do that. <laughs> Ideally, this year would be great. So I was like, OK. Um, go to law school, clearly have no talent for this speech writing thing. And then in law school, I met this guy named Josh, who had been a speech writer for President Clinton. And Josh and I started freelancing together, and he really taught me how you structure a speech, how you write to be heard as opposed to be read. And he got a job on General Wesley Clark's primary campaign in 2003. This was our third year of law school, and he like somehow convinced me to move to Arkansas and help him with this campaign as a speechwriter, even though our law school was in Massachusetts. So that was a lot of back and forth. Um, Clark lost. And then Josh got a job on the Kerry campaign after law school and got me a job too. And then Kerry lost. And then I was like, OK, I really I need a job, so I am going to go be a lawyer, which was fine. But it was clearly not my calling. And a couple of years later, I get this call from Josh again. And he said, Hillary Clinton is looking for a chief speechwriter. You should apply. And I was like, no, I'm not qualified. She's amazing. She's been my hero since I was 12. No, not qualified. He was like, all right, you've been deputy chief speechwriter for two campaigns, but don't worry about it. <laughs> a month later, he calls again, asks me again. I say, no, too scary. A month later, he calls me, says, you know what, Sarah? I think they might be amenable to having co-chief speechwriters. Would that work for you? And I was like, yeah, I think I could handle that. So I apply, I interview, and Josh calls me to tell me I've gotten the job, except they only want one chief speechwriter. <laughs> so <laughs> by then, I was like, well, I can't, you know, I'm kind of stuck. Um, <laughs> did that job for 17 months, and then, as you know, she lost. It's a pattern in my life. And uh, I then got a call from John Favreau, who was then Senator Obama's chief speechwriter on the campaign. Some of you might know John from Pod Save America. Hope you are all friends of the pod. Any Everyone friends of the pod listen. in the audience. It's a great show, guys. Everyone should be listening to it. Great show about politics. Um, and he asked me to come work for him, and I said yes. And then that's where I met Mrs. Obama when I worked on her convention speech in 08. And then Barack Obama actually won, which was like, this was such a unique experience for me to actually win <laughs> a campaign. I couldn't believe I was like out of my mind. Who knew this was possible? And I got to go to the White House, where I wrote for him and then her. So that is three losing campaigns, two failed jobs, a lot of skipped law school classes, and a situation where I almost didn't even apply for the job that ultimately got me to the White House. So serendipity.